Welcome back to Control. Let's pursue Hartman. Looks like we have to go through the wall or whatever this is um, in the Eagle Limited AWE. Hey, it's me. Get up here, can it? Oh. Can it? It's moving some stuff around. Um, I don't think it can, though. Shaded specimen captured. Regarding shaded specimen A010, formerly Dr. Emil Hartman. An alert from the Washington Monitoring Station indicated minor activity occurring in the area. Agent Estevez, or Estevaz? Estevaz was dispatched to investigate. Inside the lodge, she discovered the facility's former owner, Dr. Emil Hartman. He had been converted into a shaded individual and displayed violent behavior characteristic of its type. Agent Estevez, maybe it is Estevez, I don't know alerted the on-site research team to the specimen's presence, and with some difficulty, it was successfully contained in a black rock cell. The cell and its inhabitant were transported safely back to HQ, where the specimen remains detained in the sector as part of the Altered World event investigation. Once the investigation is closed, research teams have petitioned to relocate the specimen to their sector, sector for study. How do they contain that? It seems, I mean, it's huge and strong and can teleport around. How do they contain it? That's one. I love putting up the shield and then blasting it forwards to open the hole. It's very satisfying. Wait, is this where I need to go? Doesn't look like it. Wait, did it just close up? Wait, what the hell? Um, shit. Really? Oh, now it works? Okay. Employee misdemeanor. Agent Samuel Turnbull committed a misdemeanor while performing his duties as supervising agent of project designed to help undercover agents reassimilate to office duties. The incident began when Agent Turnbull refused one of the operatives' entry into the oldest house, claiming that they had been compromised. The situation escalated as Agent Turnbull attempted to force a confession out of the bastard. The injuries inflicted upon the victim required a trip to the medical wing. Agent Turnbull denied any guilt, maintaining th that the victim was some sort of pod person, and that he, unlike his colleagues, could see their true intentions, to use the Bureau's connections to climb the ranks of government and eventually into the Oval Office. Action taken. Despite breaching Bureau Offense Code 45, Agent Turnbull was given leave of absence with full pay due to his sterling record. He will be required to undergo a psychological evaluation upon his return. God, I love the 
destruction and the physics and everything in this game. Gorgeous. Hell yeah. Ooh, I didn't mean to actually hit the player and stop it from playing. Sorry. Is there something else in here? Is this like, ah, uh, the secret office? Because that's the music they listen to? Like, that's the only thing I can think that this would be? I don't know. Like, do I really just go all the way back? I guess so. Motel complaint. Hey Stu, did you hear about Fisher? Got himself in trouble in the motel. Why the hell does anyone volunteer to stake out that place? Gives me the creeps. But hey, at least he came back, if you can call it that. I saw some of the footage they pulled out of there with him. Tom down in evidence processing showed me. Crazy stuff. Fisher had the cameras pointed at himself half the time. I'm guessing he went nuts on day one. He did catch something, though. Got one of those fiber optic cameras under the door of the room he was hiding in and recorded something out in the hall. Looked like a shadow, maybe human. Tom tried to get the quality up, but it's still blurry as fuck. Just reaffirms my position. Stay the fuck out of the motel. Anyway, offer some shoom later? Lisa got up to an hour and 38 minutes yesterday. New record to beat. See ya, Dave. Oh, we heard the recording of Fisher talking about the fiber optic camera under the door. Yeah. Here we go. This is next to the last area in this whole map that's undiscovered. You need to get the on. Sorry, I was taking a sip of my chai tea. Way too close, should not have done that. Need power, need 
Four batteries. Oh god. Oh man. Okay, so we have to turn off the lights there to turn on this. Jesus Christ. We need another power core. We need three more power cores. Let's turn off the further one. Keep this one closer to us still going. I don't know if I need to blow up those things on it to be able to take the battery or not, but... Like, can I get by with just one on each side? No, didn't think so. No, oh, they regrow. Oh, I think they... Bl yeah, they make this thing appear. It stops you from getting the battery out, so you do need to blow them up. Still left on this one. Or do I need to blow him up over here? Please maintain your distance. Really use the explosives here, or it'll blow me up. I guess I can get away from it. Oh fuck! Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I was too close and killed myself with that, or if I just got something thrown at me or something by Hartman. Anyway, um, yeah. In hindsight, taking the battery away from the one of the ones that was closer to me was not a good idea. So I can do it better this time, much better. Maybe it just forces you, like, maybe only one opens up at a time. Yeah, I guess you can only take the one that has the stuff growing around it, so, okay. Yeah, it's not really any strategizing on which one you take first. Last one is one of the further away ones. <laughs> or wait, is it not? Oh, some weird reason I thought we had three batteries when we have two. Why is that hurting me? It's like it's exploding in the doorway. Oh, those don't count as successful hits with the launch that heal me. Okay, last one.
want to get a launch on that person up there so I can heal myself. Okay. Well, I ended up taking more damage. <laughs> Shit. I wonder if it'd be any good if I shielded myself. Alright, I can restore energy while I'm shielded. I have that ability, yeah. Well, let's try to attract him over to this side, I guess. Nope, oh, they're already there. Let's go! I can't use the shield while I'm carrying an item, though. Uh, but I can throw the item. I think we got it. Get the hell out of here, Hartman. The yeah, there's just that one big room left. Are we almost at the end of the DLC? Is it this short? It might be. I mean, I guess it hasn't even been that short. I just hope we don't end without any new Emily dialogue. Like, just please. We got a shortcut. I get the feeling there's probably nothing else in here. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. There's some raftery areas. There might be something up there. If I can find a way. And I can usually find a way. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, wait. No. I think there's an invisible wall keeping me from going higher. Yeah, okay. I still saw the, um, uh, there's a box up there, like, halfway through the elevator's journey. I can't stop this elevator mid-journey. Yeah, it's right there. How would I get there if I can't stop the elevator? I have no idea. I don't suppose I can start the elevator and run out? I've tried that before and it didn't work. Yeah, there's an invisible wall that appears as soon as you press the button to stop you from doing that. Are there any clues there? There's nothing really of note at all. Huh. Oops. Oh well. I'm 
actually hold on. Let's see if we can like break the ceiling. Yeah, okay. Hartman just came through here. God, he was hideous. He tore the security door into the Bright Falls AWE site wide open. He was so ugly. Like, wow, I got a good look at him, and Christ, he does not look like he used to. The hiss must have messed him up or something. He, he, he looks like a, a bar rag that's been twisted by the world's strongest men. Or a monster from some 80s horror movie. You know, back when it was all practical effects? Ugh, did, nasty. Real did you say something? Nasty. Remember, I can't hear you. Never mind, just go after Hartman. Ah, oh, so disgusting. I've written, rewritten. I've written and rewritten. Deconstructed, reconstructed. Experimented with different voices. Changed the style, changed myself. Forgotten the language, relearned the language. Have I been here before? Gone down this path before? The darkness wants to hide the past to make me lose my way. You must know where you've been to know where you're going. I trust what I read on these pages. I wrote them for a reason. My notes to myself. The only way to make progress, recap, then write more. The style then, lose the fat. Make it clear, ugly, functional, present, be blunt, only the brutal truth, cut through the reality, tear it apart, rewrite it, be clever, make them do the work, form the image in their minds, they make it, you just imply, incept, they're drawn to the mystery, obsessed, you set it up, they put it together, their interpretation, and there's only one, because you give them no choice, and they believe in it because it's theirs now. Darkness wants to hide the past and make me lose my way. I trust what I read on these pages. I wrote them for a reason. Cut through the reality. Before I, oh, we gotta get someone's on the outside anyway. Yeah, before I got the one on the inside, I wanted to look out here, see if there was anything. Sure not getting ability points very fast. I still need eight for multi-launch. I've only got five. You know what I can do? Not that it actually matters. Um, but I could upgrade our weapon that we're not gonna use.
Yeah, next. Thank you for meeting with us again, Dr. Arman. It's my pleasure, gentlemen. I hope the information I provided thus far has been helpful. It's been invaluable. Really, we have a much clearer picture of this <laughs> to your accounts. Well, I do consider myself a keen observer of... We did have one question, though. You mentioned in an earlier conversation that your patients displayed, and I'm paraphrasing here, unnatural abilities that you in fact encouraged during their time in your lodge. It'd be very helpful if you could fill us in on the details there. Of course. Like yourselves, I work to understand and even bend the rules of our earthly paradigm. My patient's well-being was paramount, of course, but I would hardly be a man of science if I did not reach out at the underlying truth. As I stated in my written proposal, I believe working alongside your organization could be greatly beneficial to both parties. Sharing notes, as they say. Thank you, Doctor. That's all we need to hear. Remy? Dr. Emil Hartman, you have been found in breach of codes 4, 8, and 74 of the Federal Bureau of Control Criminal Offense System. What? You can't do this? I am a well-connected man. You're making a dire mistake, my friend. You will be detained until further notice and all personal property will be confiscated, including the Cauldron Lake Lodge. That's preposterous. You can't just seize my property. I'm a United States citizen. I have rights. That lodge is my life's work. I'm offering you years of research. Get him out of here. You're making a mistake. You have to listen to me. You have to listen. <laughs> Again, I've had a plan. I know it. I've forgotten. Whatever is going on with Wake, he clearly needs some help. True.
I love that squeaky noise. Grinding. that turned into a river, a flood, and then an ocean. This was one. Wake used the materials he had, the connections he had, the people, the places. Wake put them in to make it true. His wife, the psychiatrist, his city. These connections, like magnets, move things. Alice was a conduit. She'd been in the dark place. A thing that had been Hartman sensed her near, sensed Wake through her, went berserk, broke loose. Wake made sure Alice was already gone by then. Safe. The more springs, the more the story became real. The more people believed. Cause and effect. It was extremely delicate and hard work. It had to go through the path of least resistance where success was most likely. Where there was a connection already. Wake felt the pressure grow in his head. Going mad. Wake had to escape. Right. His escape. He was already out. He wanted to make it true. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part in the story about the government agency, Wake needed something special. Something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence. Something that can't be translated. Translated. Wake channeled Burroughs and Bowie. He cut up sentences and words. Orange peel. You are home. Insane. He put them in a shoebox. He pulled out the words. Wake created a Dada's poem. I'd try anything once. Or had he tried this before? Wait a minute. A shoebox? Is this wrapping all the way around to that shoebox that we've heard of every once in a while? Since practically the beginning of the base game? Remember mentions of a shoebox? I think they couldn't figure out what was unique about it, if I remember right. C could it be? His escape. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part about the government agency, Wake needed. Mm hmm. There's Hartman. Another replica. Like the one they made for ordinary. I wonder what happened here. Oh, even if I'm holding the light, that's not enough to stop the drain. Alice Wake Interview After reaching out to the Bureau, Alice Wake was brought into the oldest house for an interview on 2017. Summary The interview conducted by Agent Shaw and Dempsey revealed that Mrs. Wake had been... Uh, has had recurring nightly visitations from her missing ex-husband in her New York apartment. Mr. Wake appears out of nowhere and rushes at her down the corridor. According to her impression, he appears crazy and horrifying, clearly coming at her with violent intent. Mrs. Wake believes that he is haunting her, insisting he is not Alan but a fucking monster in his body. Mrs. Wake has not been sleeping out of the fear of these visits. Her attempts to keep the lights on through the night result in a relevant hallway's light bulb breaking every night, possibly indicating involvement of the... Further investigation required. We propose installing monitoring equipment in the apartment. What? What the hell? Uh... Okay, light's gone, I guess.
And I pressed this button that you can't see here, and it sounded like an elevator or something came up. Somewhere. Send a ranger to my location. Oh, is this an elevator? Okay. Rest in peace to that ranger. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. I don't know what you're gonna do, just stay in the light, okay? Oh right, they can't levitate. Well... luck. They are distracting them. It's actually really helpful. Where's the last battery? Oh, it's right there. Is that actually all of them? Yep, yep, looks like it is. Ah. Oh, defeat Hartman. Okay, time for the actual Hartman fight. Yep, you flank him. Ranger is amazing. I can't believe they're still alive. You dead for real? Hartman won't be a problem anymore, Langston. But investigations need someone to run it. Interested? I've seen what happens to sector heads, ma'am. No, thank you. Ma'am, I'm getting something on my terminal here, an AWE alert from Bright Falls, Washington. But it might be a glitch. The date's all wrong, a couple of years in the future. And we're in lockdown, there shouldn't be any incoming signals. Maybe it was active before we went into lockdown? Are there agents on site? Let me check. 
Agent Estevez is the field agent in charge of monitoring the site, so she should be there to let us know if the situation has been through any major changes recently. for like Alan Wake 2 or something. <laughs> so, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go see if now we can say something new to Emily. Oh, there's also a bunch of things to read around here too. Bright Falls Summary. An unconfirmed threshold manifestation occurred at Cauldron Lake, Washington. The citizens of Bright Falls had gathered in the town's southwestern fields for the annual festival known as Deer Fest. Eyewitnesses all claimed that the day had been sunny, confirmed by reviews of the area's weather reports. But then, with no warning, a thunderstorm appeared in the direction of the Anderson Farm, and a tornado rose from Cauldron Lake. The torrential rain that followed caused a flash flood. It was as if the day had turned to night. Testimony from Frank Breaker, the sheriff of Bright Falls, formerly a bureau agent, managed to guide the crowd to safety as the festival grounds were destroyed by the flood. The festival was canceled, ending one day early. Lack of official bureau presence on the scene makes this event difficult to report as a confirmed altered world event, though the similarity to other known events in the Bright Falls area lend credence to the accounts of the townspeople. of Dr. Emil Hartman. I am continuing my work alone again since certain parties were too blind to recognize a golden opportunity. Despite my generous offers, the conversations came to naught. Some people simply do not value collaboration as I do. Though I believe now that it was for the best. The sort of bold, pioneering work that I am undertaking cannot thrive under the shackles of bureaucracy and regulation. I have a history of seeking such partnerships. There was a time when I had hoped Alan Wake and I could collaborate. Together we could have produced art such that the world has never seen. But Wake was stubborn, egotistical. Writers usually are. Disappointing, nonetheless. But now, like Tom before him, Wake has disappeared into Cauldron Lake. And this is where my work turns hypothetical. Since he was lost to the lake, Thomas Zane has been observed by various townspeople. This indicates to me that the individuals within the lake are not entirely gone. I anticipate Wake will similarly return one day. While I may harbor some resentment for the man, his raw talent and determination are undeniable. From this, I have concluded that the lake and the dark place within it are not as removed from this world as I previously thought. Given my acute awareness of what awaits within, my meticulous preparations, and my considerable education, I believe myself much more prepared than either Tom or Wake. I should be able to cross into that dark realm with the chance to return as they have. All that remains is the dive itself. It frightens me, I admit, 
but such is the burden of the truth seeker. I will take my plunge into the dark tomorrow with only the light of knowledge to guide me. It is time for a breakthrough. Until I return. must be where they studied Hartman. Brightfall's Supplement On the day of the flooding, the rock band Old Gods of Asgard was rehearsing in a field outside the Anderson farm, the homestead of band members Odin and Tor Anderson. Both admitted to being in a heavy state of inebriation at the time, having spent days drinking their home-brewed moonshine while celebrating Deerfest. After the townspeople were evacuated from the flooded field, Sheriff Breaker was asked by Freya Anderson, daughter of Tor Anderson, to check on her father and uncle. Breaker drove to the Anderson farm and found the band members alive but in need of medical aid. Tor Anderson had been struck by lightning and Odin Anderson had cut out his own right eye, a possible reference to Norse deities, and they claimed they had fought and valiantly defeated a dark army of the scratching hag rising from Cauldron Lake. While impossible to verify, these events are relevant to the recurring Altered World event at Bright Falls in the Cauldron Lake. Odin and Tor Anderson have been listed as persons of interest. Kinda looks like Dylan's cell. I wonder if they treated him as badly. We should check on Dylan. Wake Evidence Description A photograph of Alan Wake captured by Alice Wake during an event in her home. Background Alice Wake, former wife of Alan Wake, has recently been visited at night by her ex-husband, or entity resembling him. Being a professional photographer, Mrs. Wake positioned cameras with motion sensors around the corridor he appears in and managed to capture an image of Mr. Wake on film. During an interview with Mrs. Wake, she mentioned that her favorite camera, a model was lost in 2010 during Altered World Event 35. No match has been found among the confiscated evidence from Altered World Event 35. It has been filed as a potential altered item and research staff stationed at Bright Falls are being contacted to check if they have any knowledge of such an item. Oh god, <laughs> there's a photograph. I'd shit my pants if I captured that. <laughs> okay, let's head back to Central Executive. Well, sadly, there's nothing new to talk about with Emily, and also Dylan, there's nothing new to talk about them either. So, just like with the Foundation DLC where I found out after I finished it that there were a bunch of secrets I missed, including the cat ears, I decided before ending this series I should take a look if there's any secrets in the Altered World Event DLC, and what do you know, of course, there is. So this is one from some site called inverse.com, never heard of it. I don't entirely understand the explanation on how you're supposed to figure this out. It has something to do with an old Gods of Asgard song where if you reverse a part of it, you hear some lyrics that say something about, I don't know, spruce trees and a list of numbers and something. Anyway, 
basically it said to come here to the room where there's the radio that plays take control and that there's a destructible wall that will then take you to like a diamond that you can go through that up there now the weird thing is is i didn't have to destroy the wall i just came back here remember last time we were here it was i mean it was just a room and it seemed like there's nothing to do in it but i just came back here and this was already open so i don't know what's up with that also, this room, this room feels smaller to me than it was before, but I don't know. It was reaffirming, though, because I thought that there was something funky about this room, and it feel, felt like there should be more. It's good to know that there is more. Press F to like stop it on a certain time. Okay. Um, it says I am supposed to enter the numbers 17716497. And seven. I assume I just press it three times. Personal mod. Health recovery on evade plus fifty. Um do we know how many like actual hit points we have? That sounds like a lot. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> um forget health recovery and launch hits. Let's try that. Of course I'm not actually hurt and I can't see my health, so I can't test it out just yet. Home. 
founded in 2014 for Odin and Tor Anderson of the Old Gods of Asgard fame for their twilight years. Built after the return comeback tour, Flip Flop to be their farewell tour. Cut short, canceled, to the chagrin of their agent, Barry Wheeler. Wheeler had managed to coax a couple of hit songs out of them before that. Balance Slays the Demon, a couple of others. Three massive stadium-sized gigs. The old men rocked like they were possessed by the devil. Like their namesakes. The backstage parties got out of hand. The air was thick with smoke. Wheeler squinted. His migraine flared. Booze and drugs. A rock and roll cliche. They ran off after every gig. Wheeler had security track them down to the craziest after parties. The Andersons were so old. Vampires. Princes of fucking darkness. After every gig and the rampaging party that followed, it took them weeks to bounce back. And they never did completely. Each time, Wheeler expected them to croak. It was that bad. After the third gig, Wheeler couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't stomach the idea of another client dropping dead on him. Wheeler canceled. Called it off. It was over. After the Old God's comeback tour was canceled, Wheeler set up a foundation with the money from the record sales of the Greatest Hits album and the gigs. A lot of money. Wheeler was good at his job. Wheeler set up the nursing home facility. The old men deserved it. In 2014 for Odin and Tor Anderson. For their twilight years. We're back here now, right? Yeah, just check the website again. It looks like that's the whole thing. I didn't actually remember the events of Alan Wake very well, so I wasn't quite sure where that information fit in. But I guess it was just kind of filling in what happened after the events in Alan Wake to the Andersons. Were the Andersons major characters in the game, though? Like, I don't... I remember there being, like, a rock set and hearing a bit about the as guards or whatever but i didn't think they were really that big of a deal in the game i don't know it's been years anyway that has been the altered world event dlc which as far as i know is the last dlc coming out for control so yeah uh control's awesome i freaking love the game i hope they make more dlcs or control 2 or something i mean anything remedy makes is going to be at least pretty good thanks for watching